Hey guys, it's Mike here from Mike's OG Academy. Uh, today I'm going to start a video series on how to become your own golf coach. So I know there's a lot of great content out there on YouTube right now on how to become a better golfer, but I don't think anyone's really kind of done a series on what it takes to, uh, to really improve kind of through video analysis and basically just kind of teaching you can be your own, your own coach. So today I'm going to start that series. I'm going to the first video is going to be how to film your swing and then kind of look for in the future more and more videos kind of on how to become your own coach uh, I'm gonna go through kind of I have a basically a P1 through P10 system from each view from down the line face on you guys are gonna be able to see little checkpoints that I go through with a lot of my students um, if you guys want a little bit more in-depth and in, in detail kind of view on this I'm also gonna be making a membership site here as well. So look forward to that. That's gonna be in the makings. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to this video. I hope you guys like it. And uh, yeah, leave your comments below, subscribe. All like right, step number one on how to film. First things first, get yourself a camera. So for me personally, my students, I use an iPad. So here, let me take a view of this real quick. So it's basically just your basic iPad Pro 9.7. You guys don't need something like that. I mean, you could even start out with like an iPhone or just any type of smartphone that can film. Um, for you guys that swing pretty quick, I would definitely recommend getting a, or using the slow-mo option of that. Just because if you start swinging and the lines get a little bit blurred, it's kind of hard to see some of the angles that I'm gonna talk about. But anyways, yeah, first things first, get yourself an iPhone, iPad, or some type of smartphone. Uh, from there as well, you probably saw that I have a tripod. It's a Mini Frodo. Now again, you guys don't have to get yourself this large of a tripod. I know there's some out there for like five bucks, eight bucks, you can get like those little tiny ones. So I mean, those would help too. But again, something to keep the camera still because when you're filming, you don't want it to move around at all because then the angles that I will talk about in future videos, you're not gonna be able to see. And if you do see them, they might get a little bit distorted and you're, you're not gonna get the results that I want you guys to get. So again, Manny Frodo, iPad that's the first step all right guys now that you have your iPad or your iPhone or some type of smartphone and a tripod now let's get to filming okay so there's a couple views we're gonna go over the down the line view which is basically this view right here now when you're filming there's a lot of debate between instructors on kind of the right place to film uh, I know I was instructed under this guy called Devin Bonabrake he was a big Jim McLean guy he was on the ball target line type of side or basically when you see see uh, see it on video, it's basically right down the ball target line, or basically right where your club face is aiming. Now, some coaches like to have it a little bit more kind of in between the foot line and the ball target line. For them, it helps them kind of see uh, depth in the backswing. It helps them see some other things. There's benefits for each, and I would definitely look up on YouTube. I don't know if there's any videos out there. If not, I'll probably make one. But I would look up for the advantages of both and see which one's going to fit you personally. Uh, I know I personally use the one through the ball target line. That's just how I was trained, and it's a little, it's easy for me to kind of see path, face angle, and some really crucial things that impact. So anyways, whatever you're going to do, make sure that when you film, you're filming consistently from the same spot every single time. So what I would recommend is pick out a spot, get your either film on the ball target line or film uh, in between the foot, foot line and the ball target line walk out the amount of steps that you're taking so for this one let's say i'm going to start at the beginning of the tripod i'm going to do it in yards so one two three four five six seven eight so i'm eight yards away and if you're eight yards away to begin you better be doing eight yards every single time you film or else you're not going to get consistent angles and your swing is going to be slightly different from swing to swing so again the key point of this is consistency. I can't say it enough. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Now from there, I have mine up on a tripod. I have it probably around, let's just make it easy for you guys. Let's get my driver. It's a 40, uh, 44 and a half inch driver. Let me get this thing out real quick. All right, sorry for the, you guys are probably getting freaking sick with that at this point. So anyways, uh, Basically the camera is about, I'd say about an inch and a half higher than this 44 and a half inch driver. So right around 46 inches. 
Now you don't have to use that as a standard. Again, consistency is key, but I definitely want to start getting, start filming all the way down here. And I definitely want to start filming a little bit too high. So, I mean, anywhere within that 46 inch to about 40 inch area is going to be pretty ideal. And again, consistency, consistency. I mean, if you're off by like an inch, it's not going to be in the world inch or two. But again, once you start getting off around more than six inches, you're going to start seeing some distortion in your swing and you're not going to get consistent results. All right. So that's the down the line view. And next I'm going to get into the face on. View. All right. So now we're getting into the face on view. Again, my tripod is the same height. Now, the main thing with the face on view is you want to be able to see, well, with the other view as well, you want to be able to see the full swing and you don't want to have any part of the club outside of that frame at any point. And at the same time, you don't want to have it so far back that you look so small that you can't see the angles. So again, it's a balance. Now, if you're going to air with the smartphones nowadays, if you're a little bit too far back, that's totally cool because you can always zoom in. But again, you can only zoom out to a certain degree. So don't get too close. All right, now from here, let's see how many steps. All right, we'll go in yards again. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I got seven yards. So I'm pretty much one yard off of my down the line view. Again, um, again, it's really a matter of how much you're zooming in and how much you're zooming out depends on how many steps away you're gonna be I was one yard off from the down the line but for me I usually have t pegs and I can kind of see some holes in the grass I don't know if you guys can where I usually put my tripod so this is where I normally have it now what you also should start taking note of is what type of terrain you're on so again this range right here is on an upslope so these smartphones nowadays, it's really awesome. All you have to do is touch the screen and you'll see a little bit of a box come up and you make sure that that box is pretty much aligned to the slope as close as you can so you can start getting consistent results again. So anyways, that's the face on, that's the down the line, that's a basic general rule of thumb type of thing when you're filming your swing and again, I can't tell you how much consistency matters when you're filming. So again, wherever you start out with, you might change it within the first couple of months, you know, if you find something that you like better. But again, once you get set in stone with what you want to do with your filming, make sure that it's consistent. All right, guys, so this app is called Huddle by Technique. Um, I'm going to leave it in the description below. I'm going to leave a link to Huddle. It's a great app. It's free to use. I mean, you can upgrade it. I think it's a $40 charge. You get to see a bunch of pros and you get a lot of stores. So I'd highly recommend upgrading, but the free version is awesome. It's great. It's good to use. So anyways, this is the down the line view. So let's run this through a little bit. So as you can see, uh, one sec. All right, cool. So as you can see, when he lines up, I can see every part of his golf swing on this view. Doing a little stretching. So there's no part of the golf club or the swing that's ever outside the boundaries of this film. That's great. And as well, I'm close enough to where I can see the angles. Uh, for me, I mean, my old boss definitely would get a little pissed. There's a little bit too much room up top. Uh, basically the space that you see below would be the space you want to have on top as well. But I mean, I personally, it doesn't bother me. I mean, some people it bothers, but whatever. Anyways, the main point is I'm in the same consistent spot every single time and I can see every part of the golf swing and I'm not super far away to where I can't see anything and I'm not super close to where I can't see anything as well. So that's what the down the line view looks like. Let's go to the face on. So same rule of thumb. I can see, uh, one sec get this thing going so again same rule of thumb I can see everything that's going on in the swing I'm not so far away that I can't see any angles and I'm not so close that the club's gonna get blurry and I can't see anything as well that's kind of how you want it to look again some instructors out there might leave some angry comments saying that there's too much space up here <laughs> whatever 
So anyways, this is kind of how it should look. Great rule of thumb. Again, consistency is the key. You can see every angle in the body. You can kind of see this view. You can see swing path, club face angle at impact. You can kind of see the pressure shifts throughout the swing on the face on. You can kind of see the amount of lag or what type of angles they're having with the right elbow. All that stuff I'll go into a little bit more detail in future videos. But anyways, this is how it should look. Let me back out of this real quick and show you what the app looks like. So this is Huddle by Technique. Again, great app. I'll leave the stuff in the description. I highly recommend getting this one. It's easy to use. You can store your videos on there. If you upgrade, you can grade yourself against other professionals. They're constantly getting more and more professional. So, I mean, it's-, it's All right, guys. So there's my how-to on how to film. So anyways, this is the first video on my video series on how to become your own golf coach. Uh, there might be another title, I don't know, but for now I'm just going to stick with that. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, for my people that have already subscribed, please leave a comment below letting me know if you're going to like this type of series. I'm also going to possibly do some course vlogs soon, so give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see those. Uh, for you guys new to my channel, I try to give out a lot of detailed information that I feel will help you guys. I know there's a lot of content on YouTube and it get pretty confusing, so I'm trying to just make some sense of it and give you guys um, just great content that will help you guys out. So anyways, thanks for the support guys. Uh, keep watching and yeah, you guys have a good day.